And now for the next event of the evening, an Australian tag team match. Best two out of three falls. The 45 minute time limit. I'll introduce first the tag team trophy winners from Salt Lake City, Utah, weighing 214 pounds, Bill Melby. His partner from Camden, New Jersey, weighing 215 pounds, Billy Darnell. And their opponents on the side of the ring from Camden, Davis, Ringside International Amphitheater in Chicago. We've got a little bit of a hassle here for you that I think you'll like. As you look at this uh, little family group here, reading from left to right, you will have Bob Orton, Mighty Atlas, the referee, Tony Hajek, and then up close to you with their backs to you on the right will be Billy Melby, and, uh, and on the other side of him is Billy Darnell. Melby and Darnell, you know, are the tag team championship uh, holders at the moment. And uh, this old pair of hairy-eared ruffians are going to try and upset that title holding job. This promises to be a little bit interesting. Three falls, 45 minute time limit, and uh, can be bad. Brother Orton is back into action again after lousing up about five or six of his vertebrae. He was out for some four or five months, and uh, consequently, this is one of his first appearances since coming out of the hospital here at International Amphitheater. All those delicate handshakes that are going along there. Darnell is right in the corner, and uh, Billy Melby has his back to the center of the ring. Melby's going to start for himself and Darnell. We'll get the scoop on whether it's Mr. Atlas or Brother Orton here in just a second. Yep, we's ready to go. Come on, fellers, move over. Dad, grab it. Unlock your tripod head. Thank you. Melby's just wanting in the corner there so he can get a nickel's worth of his opponent a couple of seconds early. Melby's a specialist in a drop kick. Uh, see what I mean? This doesn't help Mr. Atlas a bit. Go ahead, flex your muscles, kid. Watch out, Atlas, that end of him floated. You kick your right square in your choppers. The bear hug. Atlas is quite good at this. As a matter of fact, he's the fellow who puts a small neck on bowling pins with this hole. Oh, now what's the matter, Mr. Atlas? Don't let the crowd heckle you. Lose your temper and you'll lose a match. Tony Hacek, the referee, affectionately known throughout the wrestling business as Blind Anthony. That's mostly because the uh, skullduggery is always going on on the opposite side of a wrestler from Tony. Bang! Right on the old clock. <laughs> Atlas wears a beautiful parable. Came right down alongside of his ears and then landed on those uh, big muscles on your shoulder, whatever they are. This is an arm bar extended that Melby has. Putting in about a. Uh oh. Well, maybe he's going to get caught in the head scissors now. Well, 
Wind it up. Make a tapping play. No, Mother, Tony is not talking about Mr. Atlas's gin rummy score at all. It's sort of a little grunt that Tony gives out with that the free translation of it is, do you want to give up? But it sounds like, you you up? Mr. Atlas, let go from the man. Well, that's all that it was intended as. Brother Orton could get in there and make a drag out of the thing. Oh, he got some distance then. Pick up. Oh, that's good for old basketball knees. Keeps them nice and limber. Pull him loose. That's a kid. Oh, I like Orton, too. Billy's trying to bust his leg off with his step over total. You can see there are several counts of two in here. Brother Orton takes a brief second out to get his shoulder off the mat. <laughs> Look at the old tendon stretch. A little more of this and this leg of Orton's is going to be about as useless as a blowtorch in a powder factory. Then. Well, if you can't wrestle it, you'll be faint. You missed him. Oh, oh, Mr. Orton. You're really getting it. And you can get away from this corner of the ring, too. I don't want you over here. Get up, says Melby. Horton was just punning there then. He was... <laughs> Is it going to work? <laughs> Mr. Melby's guy, come here, says Horton. There's the tag. Now you can get out of the ring now. Well, what are you doing? You're tagging, then you're not. Ooh, what a nasty body slam. Here's Atlas to further the cause. Three of those, and the guy doesn't stand much chance. Well, there's the first fall. It belongs to Horton and Atlas. Darnell and Melby here. They really got roughed up. Take him to the right corner, Billy. That's a good boy. Of course, uh, this is the <laughs> end of the first fall only, and it means that uh, Darnell and Melby have lost here. Let's hear from the boss, huh?
This boy Bob Orton and the Mighty Atlas, Barney Shapiro, uh, make a pretty tough combination to handle. Uh, it's not nearly as easy to handle a man of extreme shortness as Atlas has and great weight and then turn around and wrestle a guy who towers over you four or five inches as Orton does. And, uh, well, it's just not as good a shake as these two here. They're more like the same size. You kind of get used to handling them, you know, like Indian clubs, I guess. <laughs> you get one that's outsized and the thing's hard to handle. This is a 45-minute affair, and we've had a good many of you folks write and ask if the timeout periods were part of the 45 minutes. Yes, they are. They're part of the one hour. And uh, so consequently, you have a show that, if it goes to a draw, runs precisely 45 minutes, including the timeout between runs or between falls, to be more proper. But uh, this one has confused me tonight. I don't know whether it's a boxing match or a wrestling match, the way they've gone after each other. Wait a minute. He's not going to wait a minute, Orton. The bell has done for nothing. Well, let's see what old muscle and sinew here is going to do. You know? Run under wrist lock into a hammer lock. Ernell was trying to set up flying mare there in hopes he could get the thing loose. What's the matter, Atlas? Can't you decide where you're going to work? Down again. Seems like that Atlas and Horton have been able to handle Darnell a little easier here this evening than they have Melby. Darnell's a powerfully strong man. Probably as strong as Atlas. For some reason or other, he doesn't move as rapidly. He got tremendous power in his arms once he gets a hold of it. Horton is trying here. Horton here is trying to distract Haycheck, and Haycheck, mm, real George all the way. This kid, he doesn't miss a bet. Just falls. One of these days, we're going to start a national beat kind of Hajak week. Horton's starting another hammer lock here on this arm that Darnell has taken a lot of punishment on. Darnell quite can't seem to... Mr. Davis. Darnell can't seem to quite make it come off, is what I was trying to say, old boy. No question. No and such things. Hey, Jack, you should break it up. His tongue's hanging out like a four-in-hand tie. I think Tony likes to see about eight or ten inches of tongue on a choke over there. Well, there's Mr. Darnell. Stay out of his name. Get away from our corner. I don't like all of this activity. I'm driving him. Nice drop kick. Don't kick him out here. There's a little boy that can really put him on now. Those are Melby's feet flying in there. He got in there for a couple of extra licks. And there's the fall going to Darnell and Melby. So it means now that we have one, one for each, as the saying goes. What's the matter? All of his teeth kicked off? Oh, gee whiz. It's too bad. But he can buy new ones. Yes, 
Yes, gal, I know. You're very happy about the whole thing. The gal back there's got arms longer than the orangutan. One minute and 55 seconds. A body press. And the winner is the second fall, Bill Melby and Billy Darnell. Well, there you've got it. It's all official now that Al Marquisa has told you about it. <coughs> if all the... Yeah, you'd better get him repaired, uh, Atlas. I got a hunch you're going to need him in this next fall. The chips are down now. Fall to peace. <coughs> Many of you folks have written to ask who these young men are in the white shirts with Fred Kohler uh, embroidered across the back of them. <coughs> They're really not seconds as such. They're actually up there to keep admirers from crawling up on the ring. Or uh, people who are not admiring and who still want to get up on the ring and take a poke at their favorite hate. <coughs> they will uh, offer a little massage like this across the back of the neck or something like that if a wrestler asks them to. But by and large, they're, they're youngsters who are pretty good at fending off mad patrons and they do get angry we've had wrestlers hurt by every conceivable means well, we're off and running for this third fall now sit down madam Darnell has his headlock on Atlas this is one that Darnell likes this is called the double ox bow grind, the way he cooches it around here. All you need is a little bump music for it. <coughs> well, he's pulling that Nelson on Atlas. This is his own hold, so to speak, to hear him tell it he invented it. Let's see if he can get out of it. on, walk back and offer to do it again. Give him a free hold. Well, there's another one. Cutie pants. One, two. Darnell had to get out of there because of Horton interfering. Reminds you of kids fighting over a bag of marbles after somebody's just lost them. called Knuckles Knuckles, whose knuckles go first. in the other way, so I had to knee him in the pit of the stomach. For some reason or other, Horton likes to have Darnell here in the ring. There's a double reversed arm bar. Could be made into a surfboard if he'd just put his patsy up there the way they ride surfboards. 
Horton's just standing there easing the pressure on a little bit at a time. You check is letting out with that grunt here. They're going to up, which means do you want to give up? Our eminent Bavarian authority on wrestling, uh, the Curtis von Mitchell is here to drink side. You just stood up. Probably without too much hair on top of his head. Take it away from him. No, he didn't. Yes, he, no, he did Yeah, I'm going to shut up. Settle it. Hey, Jack, I don't know why you bother the man. He said no quite a few minutes ago. Hey, Jack gets a look on his face as if say, well, your shoulder blades, Buster. And that's quite true. We've never had that happen in this business. That guy Atlas really pulled on Darnell's trunk. Thought we were going to have a muscle-bound version of Minsky's burlesque there for a minute. Well, well, a two-shot. Real good. didn't notice it. Step over toe hold by Melby. Stay out of there, Buster. Don't even run you into the showers without life, boy. He's going to put his own eyes out with his own foot. The way Melby's bending that toe hole. Here, yeah, get your head down. That's what you get for... Uh, uh, uh. Fellas, we're living dangerously tonight. Cut this out. You know you're going to put him on Happy Street there if you keep that up. could be so matter of fact when I call those when those men were getting hurt well frankly it doesn't hurt me a bit two three Mr. Melby does not know where he is at the moment could be Jones Beach or anything else Nelson. One, two.
Well, there goes Atlas's full Nelson. He's going to disqualify himself. That's what he's done. Mr. Atlas, you've just succeeded in losing the match for you and your string bean companion there, Mr. Bob Orton. Milby and Darnell are the winners by virtue of a disqualification. Hey, folks, what happened? She wins. Can't argue on small points, Mr. Atlas. You have just loused up the detail. Official people, Billy Darnell, Billy, Billy Melby, over Orton and the Great Atlas. Happy Davis speaking to you, Ringside International. Hope you enjoyed it.